Professor Harold Winkler from UCT's Energy Research Center delivered his inaugural lecture titled Climate Change Mitigation in the Context of Development on August 17th. The lecture began with an address by Dr. Max Price, the Vice Chancellor of UCT, who reminded audience why the inaugural lectures are a significant event at the university. Inaugural lectures are an important event, ceremony and rite of passage. They're an important event for the university because they are one of the opportunities for us to link with the public and with the university community more generally. Many of our lecturers are highly specialized. They're focused within a faculty or within a department, within an academic conference, and they are often technical and not easily accessible to people from other disciplines and people from the public. Inaugural lectures are different in that sense because they are about putting our stars on show to the wider community and sharing that knowledge and with the wider community. Professor Winkler was then introduced by Professor Francis Peterson, who gave a brief history of his academic career. Harold has been primarily focusing his research on the interaction between energy and climate change. And when I often refer to climate change or climate change policy, uh, and outside the university, Harold's name always comes up. He's also the lead author for the Intergovernmental Panel in Climate Change uh, and Working Group 3 uh, on Mitigation, and you probably will hear a lot of that uh, in the coming, the coming months. Uh, the COP17 conference uh, uh, that's going to be coming up in Durban, and uh, Harold is, is heavily involved uh, in that as well. Professor Winkler began his lecture with the reasons why he has dedicated his academic career to climate change. Let me say why climate change fascinates me and uh, it, why it is a problem that I'm happy to devote, devote my, my career to. Climate change is a long-term problem that, needs, that requires urgent action. It's a global problem that requires action <clears throat> at the local level. It's a problem that has been described as having become too political for, for the technicians and too uh, technical for, for, the, for the politicians. It's a problem whose solution will have to be fundamentally ethical in, in its orientation and pragmatic in its, in its application. Uh, that, uh, in, in academic terms, it's a research problem uh, with complexity across time, scale and discourses of science, engineering, economics, humanities and policy, and I haven't even named them all. That makes pretty sure that there are no easy solutions uh, and no easy answers um, and research problems for, for a lifetime and more. Uh, in plain terms, fighting climate change, I believe, uh, is the foremost challenge of, of, of the century and tackling it in South Africa uh, with all that that means is a dream job for me. So that's why I'm doing this. He emphasized that although mitigation is at the heart of the South African economy and is a big contributor to South Africa's GDP, we cannot address this problem by only focusing on ESCOM and SASOL. Even though as a share of GDP, that influence has declined and gone more into the tertiary sector, the financial sectors, ESCOM and SASOL uh, in, in the energy supply side, but also in the use side, the very energy intensive uh, industries in aluminium, iron and steel, um, based on cheap electricity. This is what our economy has been built around and it still exerts a uh, an influence in our economy disproportionate to its actual contribution to, to GDP. It also, as you can see, uh, uh, amounts to very significant parts of our emissions. Our total emissions are probably now around somewhere around 500 megatons of, uh, of CO2. And one of the ways of say that I like saying this is that you can't address this problem without ESCOM or Sassel and Sassel. You also can't address it by only looking at those two, but, but you can't, certainly can't address it without them. The more fundamental point is that, that climate change really poses um, a, a challenge to uh, the structure of our economy. He said that in South Africa there are key areas for quick action to tackle climate change. And, and there are four main uh, sectors that emerge in our work that we, that we know where the big emission reductions um, are going to be. Um, and they, they are in, on the energy supply side in electricity and liquid fuels and in the use side and in transport and industry. So if you address electricity, liquid fuels, transport and industry, you're going to address 87% of our, our emissions. That's where the big reductions are going to be. That doesn't mean we shouldn't do things in the residential sector or in commercial buildings. We should. 
but that's where, where the big um, options are going to be. And moving away from this kind of picture to, to a different one of our economy uh, will require some very fundamental redefinitions of how we see our economy and how we see things like our competitive advantage, whether we see it around cheap electricity or whether we see it around other resources, around climate-friendly technologies, around other sectors of, of the economy. And, and certainly, uh, sometimes it's, it's uh, emphasized that we've got these, these big endowments in, in, in coal and also in, in metals and minerals, that's true, but we also have huge endowments of natural resources in, in, in solar in particular and in, and, and in other areas. Um, and so I think we need to look to the future, not emphasizing only one of our, our, our endowments, but, but also in particular the, the climate friendly ones. If in fact we want to have an economy that is going to be robust to a future world, which almost certainly is going to be carbon constrained. Summing up his lecture, Professor Winkler's key message was that the realities of climate change requires urgent action. I, I, I think I did emphasise and say just now again that we don't know all the answers. Um, so some of the big questions that we face are really about how we develop and how we make our, our development uh, more inclusive, more of a different kind. But we do know a lot of what we need to do and, and looking forward to the COP in Durban, certainly it's very clear that from South Africa's point of view, um, you know, we need to take action. We need to also, yes, we're hosting a, a big global event. We're trying to facilitate a good outcome for the world, but we must also show what we're doing. And as, as, as I said in the lecture, the four, we do know the four big areas are in electricity and in liquid fuels on the supply side and in transport and industry and energy use side. So it really is an energy problem and a problem of energy development. And if we can change the quality of how we develop that energy um, and address both the challenges of poverty and reducing emissions, then I think we can have um, an economy and a society that's really going to work in the future.